Superior panel is sponsored by Active Iron. Use the code HERSPORT30 on their website, www.activeiron.com to get 30% off. We are delighted to have Claire from Active Iron over today. We are looking forward to talking all about iron, all about Active Iron and just learning loads. So welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, Neve. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of iron, tell us why iron is important. Yeah, so I suppose iron is a really essential nutrient. Um, it's essential to life. So um, really it's responsible for the formation of uh, blood cells, red blood cells and hemoglobin. And that in turn is responsible for transporting oxygen all around the body. So I suppose how that can um, affect you then is, you know, it helps support energy levels. Uh, it can reduce tiredness and fatigue. Uh, it also helps support with cognitive function um, and then it's great all around for the immune system as well. And it can be difficult sometimes I think to understand where, you're, where your own body is at and that. So is it common to have inadequate iron levels? Yeah it's actually really common so um, I, like when I first saw the numbers I didn't think it was actually that high but it is one of the highest uh, nutrient deficiencies in the world so uh, there's actually two billion people worldwide living with inadequate iron levels and I suppose it's, it's quite a unique uh, nutrient because it affects women uh, more so than men so uh, one in four women actually experience inadequate iron levels uh, and that's really just down to menstruation so typically women need two to three times more iron uh, than men um, another group uh, that it particularly affects is pregnant women so up to 40 percent of pregnant women can experience inadequate iron levels um, we recently um, did a clinical study with active iron and i suppose as part of the recruitment um, process uh, we uh, recruited women who had a self-reported history of intolerance to iron so these were women who had taken iron in the past but um, it really didn't agree with them and what we actually found from that group of 204 women 65 percent of them had inadequate iron levels so that just goes to show you, you could be taking uh, iron supplements, but because you're suffering from the side effects, you kind of enter into this, you know, stop taking it, take it again for a while, stop again. You enter into that cycle uh, and that can mean then that, you know, if you do have um, inadequate iron levels, you, you could actually fail treatment on it. And it's just a continuous cycle. I'm surprised by the number being so high, like one in four is, is a really high statistic. Um, and yeah. in terms of um, having those inadequate iron levels, like you have the, the symptoms of it, can it be something that we as women just ignore? Yeah, I mean, we, we can often, I suppose the most common symptom of inadequate iron levels would be tiredness and fatigue. And you think about it, like you can put tiredness and fatigue down to so many things like, you know, you might be like, oh, I haven't been sleeping very well or, you know, I've, oh, I've just had a lot on. I'm, I'm constantly on the go when there could actually be, uh, I suppose, an underlying problem there. Um, other symptoms um, might include cold hands and feet, I think. I think nearly most Irish women seem to complain about cold hands and feet, you know. Uh, that can often be associated with just poor circulation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, headaches, pale skin, poor appetite. So it can often just kind of, you know, slip by um, and, and become just a bit unnoticed, um, mm -hmm. I suppose. And if you're not, you know, regularly checking your iron levels, it, it can just be totally missed. And in terms of advice for women that maybe are wondering if they are have got an amateur iron level um, or they do want to get them checked out, like what's the, what's the best thing to do? Yeah, I suppose um, there's certain groups who would be more at, at a higher risk of having inadequate iron levels. So um, menstruating women uh, is a big one, especially those with uh, heavy periods. Mm -hmm. um, pregnant women. Um, 
a course of iron supplementation is often recommended by uh, midwives um, for pregnant women. Uh, endurance exercises is, is a big one, which you've probably seen um, yourself. You know, um, you know, we have um, our brand ambassadors, Afrikyo uh, and Samita Puskur, who, who work with us. You know, they constantly have to be watching um, their iron levels. So I suppose what I would say is, you know, have a think about those at risk groups. Do you fit into any of those? Um, I suppose as well. A lot of people are, I suppose, uh, trying to maybe cut down on their meat intake and they're, they've changed their diet maybe and they're starting to eat more vegetables. And I suppose the key thing about iron is there's two different types of iron. So there's hame and non-hame. So hame is the, the iron that you get from meat and then non-hame is um, the iron that you would get from, say, green leafy vegetables mm -hmm. such as spinach. Um, the problem with non-hame iron is that it's very hard to absorb. So um, that just means that you it, it can be quite hard. Say if you're an endurance exerciser and you also have a plant-based diet, you know, you might really struggle um, with your iron levels. And in that case, um, a, an iron supplement is going to be completely um, beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting, I guess, from the endurance exercise theory. Uh, piece like people that are involved in maybe a lot of running cycling rowing like there's loads of sports out there so that people should consider maybe that they fall into that group um, yeah, but also as you're talking about people that might be like there's kind of a almost like encouragement to consider the amount of meat intake that, that we're having from an environmental perspective and then you obviously have a lot of people that are vegetarian and vegan so definitely something like I, I know usually um, you know when people do change from if they become vegetarian or vegan they are, are conscious of it but um, definitely something to be to to look into and make sure that you are looking after yourself as you do maybe transition into um, yeah. kind of a new a new um, way of eating it's probably you know something that can go not ignored but a little bit under the radar and you think that you're okay but maybe maybe getting your iron levels is um checked out and um, you know is, is something to do but really interesting because it's absolutely something I guess that uh, society is, is looking at and, and almost encouraging at this point yeah and like if you think about it um to replace the iron that's lost during menstruation you'd have to eat a kilo of spinach to replace that and that's about 12 bowls of spinach yeah, like, yeah. you know I love spinach but it's gonna be awful hard to eat uh all that that spinach as well you know and um I think it's just good practice anyway to get your nutrient levels mm -hmm. checked in general you know um my own doctor would would recommend that you do that once a year you know mm -hmm. and just have a little check in with yourself uh, and see where your iron levels are at. Another thing you can do is, um, you know, a lot of people um, use MyFitnessPal to like, you know, track what they're eating and everything. It, it's kind of worth doing a little experiment where maybe you, you know, if, especially if you're worried about kind of, you know, oh, do I need to be taking supplements mm -hmm. that like may not be necessary. And particularly sometimes there can be a bit of a worry about overdosing with iron. But it's worth even just tracking what you're eating on my fat, my fitness pal for a week, and you can actually you know break down your some of the nutrients mm -hmm. from there. And iron is one of them, and you can see how many milligrams of iron you're getting in a day. Like the recommended daily allowance is fourteen milligrams. I know myself, you know, um, if I check my fitness pal, I might be only getting half that mm -hmm. most days. So, and it can totally vary, you know, depending on what you're eating. So that's actually a, a really good tip for people just to even get a, a sense of where they are. Um, exactly, yeah. In terms of active iron, tell us a little bit more, like what is active iron and when might people uh, need to supplement with iron? So uh, active iron is uh, an iron supplement. Uh, and I suppose what's really unique about active iron is, is it has this groundbreaking protein formula. So um, you, you've probably heard yourself uh, and many people have experienced it, but, um, you know, side effects is, is kind of the main deterrent um, people have with iron supplements. So 
actually eight out of 10 people uh, suffer from the side effects mm -hmm. of iron. So those might be symptoms such as, you know, constipation, diarrhea, nausea. There's largely around the gastro, mm -hmm. um, the in gut, really. Um, and I suppose what's unique about active iron is because it's in this um, protein formula, it passes through the stomach and goes straight to the body's natural site of absorption, which is the DMT1, uh, which is a receptor protein in the small intestine. So if you compare that to other um, iron supplements, um, a lot of them, you know, they wouldn't have this, uh, I suppose, uh, special coating. They would enter the stomach um, where, you know, the pH is obviously quite harsh um, and it can break down the iron supplement and cause it to dissolve and that's what actually causes those side effects then so um, that's what's going to you know irritate your tummy then it's still absorbed in the small intestine but I suppose it's the breakdown of that in the, the stomach that's really causing um, mm -hmm. that gut irritation. Uh, what's unique then about active iron is because it's, um, you know, passed through the stomach and, and absorbed in the small intestine, uh, it offers two times better absorption then versus uh, standard oral iron. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're clinically proven uh, to do that as well. Uh, uh, also, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, um, that also means that, you know, compared to other iron supplements, active iron is actually six times, causes six times less gut irritation. So it's a huge difference, really. Yeah, no, that's what I, was, what I was going to say was, you know, you often do hear people that experience side effects and do get put off sometimes taking iron supplements because they they just find that the, the side effects are kind of uncomfortable and, you know, that they, they just really get kind of put off but I, I think yeah. from you know the research that you guys have done and um, from the kind of comments back like it's um it, it's a much more comfortable experience I suppose um in terms of you know customers like what have, have feedback been from customers or from your brand ambassadors I know you have you know, obviously African Sunita and they have um you know commented on on their experiences with it which are all positive yeah, we've had like amazing um, feedback from our consumers. Uh, I suppose the main thing is the frustration around side effects mm -hmm. lifts for a lot of people. Um, so I, I kind of touched on it there before, but a lot of people who take iron, they enter into this cycle where they take the iron, they experience, um, I suppose, those side effects. And they, they nearly have to make this decision. Do I continue on with this iron and suffer from, you know, constantly being constipated? Mm -hmm. um, or do I actually just stop taking my iron and, you know, just put up with symptoms of low iron, um, mm -hmm. which is, you know, tiredness and fatigue. Like a lot of people, it, they, they almost kind of weigh it up. Yeah. Um, and then maybe what they might do is they might say, okay, I'll take my iron um, maybe every second day. But they're not really, um, I suppose, solving anything. They're not um, addressing the iron levels. So they end up on this start-stop cycle um, and they just fail treatment. So uh, up to 50% of people actually stop taking iron mm -hmm. supplements because of those side effects. So that's mainly, you know, the great positivity that we're getting from consumers like you know I finally have my energy back um you know I, I feel like I can actually you know keep up with my kids now um I'm not like you know constantly um having problems with my tummy um and you know what's great about active iron as well is you can actually take it on an empty stomach as well so mm -hmm. um you know, they can, it's, it's a lot more convenient than they can take it wherever they want. And then we've seen from, um, you know, athletes like um, Afra Kyo there. I mean, she obviously has to completely watch what she's eating. Um, Afra has really struggled with um, iron in the past and she's even had to get iron injections, which, mm -hmm. you know, really isn't pleasant. Um, and, you know, she'll often say herself, you know, it, it's 
doing those extra things like watching your vitamin levels and everything that give you that extra 1% uh, at mm-hmm. the end of the day. And I guess she has a bronze medal now. So, <laughs> you know, she's not wrong. Absolutely. Um, no, I think, I think that's all really informative. And, you know, it's, I, th- I think it'd be positive for people to hear about a product out there that, you know, um, may not have the same side effects of uh, other supplements that they've experienced before. So I think people would be definitely interested in um, learning more about Ashtaparin. From um, the research, if you've done a lot of research about women and their periods, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we we um, we have a campaign uh, launched called Better Days Period, uh, and really that's about I suppose empowering women to just not just accept their period symptoms, mm-hmm. um, such as tiredness and fatigue. So what we did is we we really wanted to understand, I suppose, why is it women just put up with Mm -hmm. a lot of these symptoms and you know just accept them and so what we did was we surveyed 2400 women uh, across the UK and Ireland and um, we got some you know amazing uh, insights uh, Mm -hmm. I suppose from that so um, I suppose just to highlight some of the main ones so at the top um, I'll talk about it in the context of uh, the Irish women because that would be I suppose um, really relevant to you guys so um in terms of top symptoms um irish women experience stomach bloating uh tiredness and fatigue and stomach cramps those were the top three um but actually of those three tiredness and fatigue was the one that they were most likely to put up with um of all the symptoms um 43% 43% actually uh, felt tiredness for longer than four days. So um, nearly, a, we can guess that a lot of them were actually experiencing that tiredness and fatigue throughout their cycle, not just mm-hmm. when they were on their period. Um, 81% uh, say that they just put up with their symptoms uh, each month and, and they just accept that uh, and 60% actually said that you know what it's just part of being a woman mm-hmm. get on with it um, which which is you know kind of crazy in a way to think that you would just you know put up with them um, and interestingly as well only uh, 34% of women actually consulted their healthcare professional um, about their um, disruptive period symptoms um, and now actually 47% go online to learn more about their mm-hmm. period symptoms. So I think it's very interesting that, you know, women aren't opening up about these symptoms um, to their healthcare professionals. You know, the, I suppose, you know, it's great in Ireland that we have so many um, great healthcare professionals to talk to, but we're not really utilizing mm-hmm. that. Um, I think there is, and that's really what we wanted to do with the campaign as well is really to encourage women to have those open conversations either amongst themselves um, but also with their healthcare professionals um, as well. Um, other um, key insights that we found so 34% of women stop enjoying time with family and friends when they're on their periods. Um, And 51% don't wear certain clothing. So it really does, you know, impact your life. You know, Mm -hmm. um, although it's a couple of days, you know, it it really does impact um, women's lives, Uh, particularly in sport um, as well, was it? um, I think 47% of women actually stopped exercising. Mm -hmm. during that time and I suppose that would make you wonder you know we know that there's um huge numbers of you know women um or your girls dropping out of sport Mm -hmm. like I would guess that a big reason for that could be menstrual symptoms you know um so we really need to I suppose educate um Mm -hmm. girls in school as well how to put up with your not put up but how to if you are experiencing um disruptive period symptoms there are people you can talk to Mm -hmm. about it and you don't have to just put up with it yeah Um, yeah absolutely yeah Yeah, um, definitely i think um in terms of 
the the numbers there like I think there's this attitude of of get on with it and this like you said like this is just what it is being a woman where that's yeah. not always the case like something sometimes there is a little bit more to it and you know maybe seeking to your doctor is is the right thing to do just to check it check it out and make sure that what you're experiencing and um, you know is normal or is you know is nothing out of the ordinary because like that I think a lot of people kind of have the, have the attitude like oh it's fine like it's only a couple of days but like as you said like it is a couple of days but it's a couple of days every month for several years so you know when it's exactly you know you know a quarter of a period of um you know of your lifetime or of most of your lifetime like it is quite a substantial uh, amount of time so we shouldn't be you know just accepting something because we've you know being kind of conditioned to just not really speak about it but do you think we talk about periods enough I think we are getting better but we still have you know a really long way to go it's still very much seen as a you know taboo subject you know it's awkward there has been some great movements like with the period poverty movement um you know even things like um you know the ads for tampons now the liquid was always blue in the ads Mm -hmm. and now it's red and I think we need to encourage more of that um to make it less taboo less awkward um and for it to be like seen as almost like a shameful thing um and we also need to speak about it at a much earlier age Mm -hmm. um and have more education around it in school like I remember um, in school, like we, we were all in class one day and, um, you know, our period education was, you know, and one of the nuns came in and said, hands up, who's had their period yet? And everyone was just like, oh, it's yeah. shock, really, like, um, and no one kind of knew where to look, whereas, you know, in a way, that's nearly, she had the right attitude where, you know, she could just say, why can't we just, you know, yeah. ask a question like that? Why does everyone have to kind of, you know, nearly go inside themselves and, and be scared to talk about it? But that's where the education piece comes in. You know, um, I think parents need to talk to their kids about it at an earlier age and have an open and honest discussion about it um, and, you know, just remind, um, you know, their their kids that it, it's not something to be ashamed of. It's something to embrace and it's all part of, I suppose, being a woman and look at the positives mm-hmm. about it um, rather than the negatives and, and make sure that they know, you know, that there is things out there um, to support them there's services out there to support them um but also even you know on the iron side of things you know um obviously iron loss is is huge because of um you know menstruation uh, and that can lead to tiredness and fatigue and if tiredness and fatigue is one of your symptoms you know, why would you not kind of address that? And it it may be one of many symptoms Mm -hmm. that, you know, you can kind of take control of, um, I suppose. Like we saw even um, in our survey, you know, 46% were most likely to put up with tiredness uh, and fatigue, but actually 55% never considered that they could have low iron uh, as Mm -hmm. a result of that. And it, in addition to that, you know, 64% of women experience um, heavy periods. Th- those women could be hugely at risk yeah. of um, inadequate iron levels. So, you know, we need to, if, if taking an iron supplement can um, support you with one of your menstrual symptoms, you know, why wouldn't you take control um, uh, and take an iron supplement? Yeah, I think some of the things that you're touching on there, like a lot of it is about education and, and being informed. So hopefully from the conversation today, uh, people are, are learning a bit more and maybe kind of reconsidering just accepting some of the symptoms and, and might actually go and get it, get it checked out. But in terms of Active Iron, um, where can we find the product? So Active Iron is available in all pharmacies nationwide. Uh, you can also buy it from our website. And um, so we have a a discount code with um, her sport um, 
as well. So, yeah, I mean, and, you know, if you are considering taking an iron supplement, you know, talk to your pharmacist um, about uh, active iron um, or iron supplementation, you know, in general, uh, and they would be more than happy um, to support you on that. Absolutely. I think um, in, in terms of checking out the website, the website will be at the, the bottom of this video and you can find out more about Active Iron on the social channels and everything as well. And as mentioned, uh, we have a, a Her Sport discount code, so that is Her Sport 30, which you can use on the Active Iron website as well. Claire, thanks so much for talking to us today. No problem. Thanks very much, Neve. Very good.